Hello, welcome to a presentation that reports on ongoing work on modeling contact with musical resonators. This research is carried out at SARC together with my colleagues Aviram Banaprakash and Paul Stapleton and also fits within a larger European project, V-Rays, which investigates audio for virtual reality. So what do we mean with contact and why is it important? Well, in acoustic instruments, we can think of contact in terms of excitation, injecting energy into the system, such as hammering or bowing a string. Then there are also forms of contact that do not have this purpose, but instead are changing the vibrational characteristics of the main resonator. Think of holding down a string to achieve a certain pitch, or resting a hand on a membrane to damp a percussive strike sound. Non-excitational contact manifests itself in three basic forms, damping, clamping, and mass loading. Typically, one of these dominates. For example, by grabbing the edge of a cymbal, one stops the sound, but, as we can see in the spectrogram, not necessarily damps all partials at the same rate. And if you zoom in, you can also observe a slight decrease in some of the partial frequencies, which is due to mass loading by the hand. In the middle, we see a regionally clamped vibraphone bar, where the effect on the resonance characteristic depends on the region uh, that you clamp. In the example on the right, we consider that the effect of surface density of a gong uh, to regionally increase when it is partially submerged into water. This is an established practice that composers have actually explicitly written for. The spectrogram here highlights how the partials are affected when dynamically changing the submerged area, notably with significant difference in the rate of change in frequency, which is typical for this kind of sound. In this paper, we aim to simulate all three forms of contact, taking a linearly vibrating plate with three edges as a testbed 2D resonator. So how does one model such contact forms? Here we do this by adding a locally reacting contact layer to the plate, which adds time and space varying stiffness, damping and surface density to the plate. So for example, if we want to introduce damping over a certain region, we simply ramp up the value of sigma across that region. Now, this approach involves some simplifying assumptions, but it has the advantage that there is no need to model or track the position of contacting objects, thus making the sensor interface problem a lot easier. So let's see how we can model this with an equation of motion, which takes the form you see here, where u denotes transversal displacement of the plate. The blue parameters are plate constants, and the time-varying contact parameters are shown in green. Free boundary conditions are set, which enables virtual grabbing of the plate from the side. One question immediately arising here is, how are the disputed contact parameters actually controlled? This has to be considered in conjunction with the sensor interface, which here is envisaged to be a high-resolution 2D touch patch controller, such as the sensor morph we see on the right-hand side here. This will give a pressure map, P, that we can directly use to drive the contact parameters with essentially through a simple linear mapping. In this, the coefficients can be configured for a specific type of interaction. To turn the model into a synthesis algorithm, we need to discretize the system, here in both space and time. And for that, we define shift operators from which we can construct difference and averaging operators that can act upon the 2D grid function U, L, M, N. That we see here at the top. These operators are then applied in a specific manner to the equation of motion, as you can see here at the bottom of the slide. The, the important aspects are that we need to make sure that we end up using only defined grip points in U, uh, and that means that only certain combinations um, of operators will work, uh, that we obtain an explicit scheme, so gain in efficiency, uh, for that, the backwards operator here in the frequency dependent loss term um, is useful. And that we do not introduce any stability constraint that depends on the contact parameters, which, remember, are time varying. For this, uh, the use of averaging operators in various places uh, is instrumental. 
To examine that last point, one has to perform energy analysis. This table shows the power balance and some of the terms in it, with the continuous domain terms side by side with the discrete domain terms. Now, for an explicit scheme, one will typically have a stability bound, in this case, one that depends on the plate parameters. But that's okay, these are constants, and one can just choose an appropriate grid spacing for a given time step to satisfy the stability condition, under which the numerical plate energy will always be non-negative. Perhaps more importantly, the numerical energy due to contact is unconditionally non-negative, so stability does not depend on the time-varying contact parameters. But how do we actually implement this? Well, at the heart of the algorithm is an update equation that we can drive from our final difference scheme, essentially by writing the newest displacement explicit in terms of older terms, and then do time-stepping with that in some sort of sample loop. In this case, we have several constants, shown in blue here, related to the plate parameters, as well as time-varying coefficients, shown in green here, which relate to the contact parameters. Uh, these contact-related parameters are actually then updated at every time step. The scheme is then explicit, as we can justify it by the weight of the leading term on the left in order to update the displacement. The grids below simply show the groups of nodes that appear in the update equation. So one of the things we can do with the model is simulate regional clamping. For example, here on the left, a square plate is clamped over a corner region, uh, using a very high k value. So when waves arrive at the edge of that region, they bounce off. On the right of the slide, uh, we've clamped a region lying outside the indicated circle, thus in effect simulating a clamped circular plate. On to a dynamic example then. On the left, we have a plate with regional damping with accompanying mass loading, applied as indicated with the orange color and according to the time profile in the middle plot. You can see in the spectrogram how the partial frequencies are pushed down a little, which does not occur when we apply only damping and not mass loading. Although the effect is quite subtle, we can hear this as well. On the right then, an attempt to simulate a water gun. The plate is clamped at the top corner and gradually lifted upwards and downwards again. We can observe the same phenomenon that we saw in the measured sound, in that the partial frequencies are shifting with the plate movement, with substantial differences in the observed rates. We can clearly hear this in the sound example. These examples were computed offline. Eventually, though, the idea is to build a real-time implementation coupled to a sensor interface. And this then could begin to function and respond like a musical instrument, be it a virtual acoustic one. One of the underlying ideas then is that that would afford manipulations and articulations that would be difficult or expensive with mechanically constructed instruments while keeping similar affordances in place. For example, what might be possible is on the fly reconfiguration of a clamped region through physically clamping the sensing device. All of this throw some computational challenges though. In particular, we face additional overheads for mapping the sensor data to the finite difference grid, which involves 2D installation. And the costs go up even further if we add some much desired non-linearity to the model, for example, by extending to a von Karman plate model. Other than that, improvements can also still be made in terms of less numerical dispersion and for a circular plate, more accurate boundaries. To conclude then, uh, the proposed model enables simulation of musically relevant forms of non-excitational contact with a rectangular plate. And turning this into a virtual acoustic plate instrument will require real-time implementation of the proposed model in conjunction with design and development of sensing strategies. Further future work would include then model extensions and possibly the application to membrane-based instruments. Particular interest here is the simulation of the tabla uh, because its performatory vocabulary consists of numerous intricate forms of dynamic distributed contact. So yeah, thanks for watching.